those tiers until they're unslept, until the yeah. duration's complete. So Prepare in a lot of ways, if you uh, use it in the right situation, you could do, be in a one versus five against the life zone, just destroy him. Also keep in mind that Rage, despite being really good against magic, the ensnare from Naga Sion goes through that as yeah, well, and he can't get rid of it. So that's, this is actually a really questionable pick. I really like the synergy because of his ultimate uh, infest, as you guys may or may not remember, when you, you can go inside of a hero or inside of a creep, and for this purposes, we're going to be looking at somebody like an Earthshaker once he gets a Blink Dagger. Well, it gives you an instant initiation, which is nice, but... One thing we'll that see. I do like about the Life Stealer is there's a lot of tanky, or there's a couple of tanky heroes on EG. Mm -hmm. And the way that Life Stealer's second skill works, it's called Feast. You Life Leech a percentage of their current HP. So if you hit somebody that's 1,000 HP, you do 70 more damage and you heal 70 damage. So you could use that against Tidehunter. You could use that against Brewmaster Pandas when he battle. splits. His Pandas have a pretty good amount of HP. And he can kill those decently fast as well, so I don't completely understand the pick other than the whole thing you just mentioned, uh, infesting out of a Blink Dagger, but I I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. It looks like he's going mid, actually. They're doing a dual mid here with a Lich and a Life Stealer, and they're going to be planning to go against Arteezy's Naga, so this is how they're countering it. They said, oh, uh, I don't care that you're playing Naga. I'm just going to make sure that we counter you. And we're going to put begins. a bunch of, uh, we're going to put a Lich against you. And that's because Lich, Lich's third skill sacrifice here. Watch, one of these creeps is going to die. And Banana will get experience. And How will get experience. And this is a creep and experience that Arteezy is never going to get. So yeah. it's a one way to counter him. He actually messes up his block here. PBD is going to also mess it up. What a mistake here. Um, getting the block messed up is a really big deal, unless they do this on purpose, of course, because now the creep wave will meet here. And that means it's harder for Arteezy to get last hits, basically. Yeah, and Zai right now playing the Sand King with a crazy ass set, which you're gonna have to look at once the smoke is dissipated, because well, I've never seen that we do, before. Before we do, I just want to mention last hits means the amount of creeps that you kill. Uh, so if we take a look in the upper left, yeah. um, is this in order? There we go. Um, two last hits here for How, whereas Arteezy actually has only one so far, so he's gonna trade some hits here. Yeah, he so got you a can, really fast bottle. You guys can look at that pretty Holy early crap. game to see. Oh, Arteezy did. Oh boy. Okay, so this is what we call bottle crowing. <laughs> we want to talk about that. So the bottle yeah, itself can. is a. It's kind of like a consumable item, but you don't actually eat the item. So it has consumable charges that heal you up as well as give you mana over a little bit of duration of time. Now, the thing is. If you can't get to the runes, which spawn the two minutes, every two minutes at the top area on the river and the bottom area, the reason you want to get those runes in a lot of cases is because it actually fills your bottle back up, right? So since he won't be able to do that because he's in a two versus one situation, he's putting the bottle on the courier, walking the courier back to base where it will refill and he'll bring it back to himself again. So he gets, basically he can just spam his abilities without worrying about mana, mana problems. Oh, is this that new set that was in the shop? Uh, this is Arteezy's set, I know that. No, no, sorry, I'm sorry, I was going back to the Sand King. Oh. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It crazy looks pretty uh, different. Of his? Yeah. I've never seen that one before. Not sure if I'm a fan of this or not. I will tell you guys later. <laughs> You'll have to sleep on it or something yes, like that. I'll be back. I mean, when he ulties, that's when it turns green. That's why it's a little weird for me, but uh, okay. I'm sure you get. Yeah, Arteezy's continuing to bottle crow, so Damn I would expect damage. Lich to actually. Okay. Where did Lich go? Oh, Doom's actually able to grab the rune. Okay. That's pretty good for him. That could have been Sand King picking that up. Um, on the bright side, it's neither of the mid players I get it. And Doom's actually just going to shift to the jungle, it looks like, because he's having some trouble in this off lane. It's a really dangerous lane, actually. Um, again, this is the, the dangerous lane for the Radiant team. This is the dangerous rain, uh, lane for the Dire team. And that's because it's very far from the tower here to safely walk back from where the creeps are sitting. And since there's three heroes here on EG, it means it's very simple for him to die. It's not really simple, but it doesn't take a whole lot of execution from EG. They just kind of have to be in the right place at the right time. They'll use a stun into another stun into a clap, and that's three disables on one hero is usually them dying if you're auto-attacking properly. So actually, they're diving really hard trying to get Arteezy here. Chasing after Banana. I don't know if he's going to be able to get that skill. It's going to be pretty close. He's got to run now. He might be in trouble. Couple hits. Maybe he stayed too long, but he's got bottles. Man, Arteezy plays like an absolute man, if I do say so myself. Now, like you said, a lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot of people, more, mostly Arteezy more than any other, gets only one level in Ensnare. I would be shocked if he doesn't fill that up this time. Just because yeah. he's playing against, against a life Against a life I really feel like you have to because if he ever uses rage and goes on somebody, yeah. if he does like a two, three second net, or like a three or four second net, it just burns all of rage. And then life stealer is a worthless hero. Like that is why this hero is picked because of rage. And if he can counter that entirely, then he's a hero that doesn't even have a BKB.
and then people just have to walk away from him and he, and he can't get a kill. So it would be really useful. The downside is that it's going to hurt his overall HP if he does put a lot of points into that skill. So if he does max it out, it's going to be late by like 16 because maxing out mirror image is very important for your damage and also Riptide is very, very important. So he probably won't max it until later, but at some point he's going to have yeah, to. Yeah, I would hope so. But a lot of times uh, if, if there's no action early in the game, we just look at the discrepancy in levels. Uh, we compare and contrast because I think the bigger deal is the off lanes here. So we have Doom, like you talked about, that's in the jungle now. He's level three and a half. And then Tidehunter on the other side, we're going to have some action in the river, apparently. And who is... Oh, Ar Arteezy? I don't know. This is the lifestealer trying to run. Did he get arrowed or something? One Ooh, more life what a to save. Go. Not going to be enough Ooh. to get the kill. And Arteezy is now on out. the run on this Naga Siren. You're seeing this spell come oh, out Oh, my God, a regen. Scorched Earth. Did he bottle it up? He does bottle it up. Oh. That's a really lucky rune. What you just saw there from, from Doom is called Scorched Earth. You first activate it, you blood. get a little fiery ring around yourself as we have a first blood somewhere. <laughs> know, that's insane. But yeah. the ring of fire, it heals you, but damages enemies and gives you move speed. So that's why you, he was able to catch up in that in that instance. I don't know how you get first blood, Death Prophet versus Tidehunter. It's got phase good. boots. It, it's a melee hero versus that's a ranged true. hero. She has a spammable nuke. Her right click is really good with phase boots. Makes sense. Especially considering it's universe, though. That's really yeah. Surprising. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He's a really, really talented player. So that is that is the surprise. But even part. with that death, he's four and a half, and Doom is just barely four now. So Doom's starting right. to catch up a bit. So good for him. Yeah. So when Naga Siren splits, as you can see, it makes blue illusions, and these are the ones that's very obvious for us, but for your opponents, they all look the same to you. And you have to figure out how, which one's the real one based on their movement patterns, based on how much damage they take, based on how much damage they do. You can check other things like little numbers, how much HP they're regening per second. Like if they stand there stupidly for a second, you know it's not the real one. Arteezy may be in some trouble here. How's doing some right click? Um, that was kind of weird. <laughs> it's life stealing, man. You gotta be a man. He's right. the anti strength hero, which I love. But, uh, well, actually, it doesn't make any sense since I'm a fan of strength heroes. But he's a strength hero himself, so I guess we'll just let it slide. But Doom is actually back at the top lane. Interesting. So he actually used his Devour, which is his first ability, on a neutral creep. And if you do that on a neutral creep that's in the jungle, you gain any ability that they have. And right now he has a Net, which is similar to the Ensnare, actually, from from Naga Siren. Yeah, except it's ranged. Only lasts 1.5 seconds. And the important part is it costs a lot of mana. So 150, it costs Doom a lot. He doesn't have a huge amount of int in the early game. Intelligence is his stat that gives him mana pool as well as mana regen. And he doesn't have a whole lot in the early game, despite his int gain being OK. So he really can't cast this early game. It's just not going to happen. I'm more interested to see what Marana's going to end up doing. She's just leeching experience here. And what that means is if you're in a lane alone, you're going to be getting called what's called solo experience, which is the full amount of the experience. And if you have somebody come in the lane with you, if it's a dual lane, meaning two, or a tri lane with three, or in some cases a quad lane, that's not very common, obviously, uh, you actually share the experience. So you get less experience overall per person. Now, Marana, she's a big time roamer. And what roaming means is you, can't, you don't really stick to a lane roam, if you will, from lane to lane, trying to land an arrow, but we haven't really seen him uh, do a whole lot yet. Is Arteezy, again, on this Naga Siren, just going head-to-head -head versus his Lifestealer. Now has phase boots. This is a great set of boots that gives you extra damage. It gives you uh, extra speed if you activate them. So it's a really nice choice for him. One really good thing about this matchup, actually, is that Naga Siren has really high base armor. And armor is uh, the way that you resist physical damage. We said life stealers all physical damage. Well, if she has this Zion's much armor at this point in the game, attack. it means that she doesn't take that much damage straight in. And actually, because of Riptide, this lowers his armor. So life steal actually goes in the negative. Every time he's Riptide, she's gonna sleep it right Radiant's off the bat. I was gonna do some right clicking. Attack. He wasn't actually intending, oh, there was actually a Doom coming. He's got Doom, this is really bad. Oh, He's boy. gonna come back in. Here comes the Doom, there's the Doom. Arteezy running, if they get another open wounds or anything, I think he's still gonna die here. It's yeah. really not looking good for him, especially chasing. Oh, he juked him! Uh, he actually he went straight down. He's gonna try to die to Roshan. Oh, oh, he does it! Oh, that's wow. so big! He ends up denying the EXP and the gold, going to the Radiant team. Nice plays by Arteezy there. Newbie thought for sure that he was gonna juke back to the top, but even if he did, he was gonna die. That, that Doom was gonna kill him 100%. Yeah, oh, for sure. Because it lasts for so long, and he ends up going straight for Roshan. He got a little lucky there. Did he buy and an And they didn't item? go that way. Sure he he must have. Attack. He has no gold. He ended he definitely... up buying something. Looks like a Quelling Blade. Radiant's I think he got his Ring of Aqua shortly attack. before oh, dying. So he bought out. What a big save for him. And that, that means that it did spend a lot of time for Newbie to do that. And it was kind of just Radiant's a trip back to base tower. for him. Oh, they didn't get it. 
the the kill at all. They didn't get any experience, they didn't get any gold. So big time denial, if you will, to Roshan, which is the yeah. big ancient in the middle. Uh, but a bigger deal here now is Brewmaster. Eight minutes and 30 seconds, he has a blink dagger. Holy yeah. God. And arcane boots. I didn't even yeah. notice that. That's why EG oh. does this. They, they put Brewmaster in the safe lane, and they guarantee that no matter what kind of a lineup their other team has, they're going to have the Brewmaster be ready to fight. There are pushes that are earlier than this, but usually not at a point where you've already lost five towers and you have a huge gold disadvantage. And he's been getting solo experience, by the way, and Brewmaster's actually a pretty good solo hero because if Zhao Wei does come up, he can end up clapping and doing damage. So... With the fast blink dagger, like look at that easy last hit. He did some damage, gets more last hits. Now he gets a bunch of free hits in. <laughs> he doesn't end up killing him, but he puts a lot of pressure on him. He looks so he could cute, get but doomed, he actually. He They're could. thinking about it. If yeah, he could actually he block him in. Up. Yeah, if the fissure was there, maybe yeah. it would have been pretty tough. I mean, remember, Brewmaster is still pretty tanking his own right, even yeah. without his ultimate. So if, if, for example, Brewmaster is standing here, if they can land the fissure from this location like this, It'll block him here, and he can't move for eight seconds. Dyer's so if he gets doomed right here and right clicked, he would end up dying. Here we but go, Perch. Gotta be a we have careful. a smoke of deceit Ooh. just popped, which is a consumable that makes you invisible to the mini map, meaning no wards will see you once you come in contact with a hero. Holy crap! Zai's so got a blink too. You will be seen. Oh my God! Sanking his blink. <laughs> Holy Jesus! We have two blink daggers and Marana arrow. This is probably going to be a kill. If I, I mean that's. Not the most crazy thing I've ever said, that's for sure. Lich, almost level six, actually. He's actually. Ooh, will it be killing Lich? Oh, they see him, they see him. Dyer's right, here comes. Oh, there's the first strike first. Here comes the arrow. It's going to land just barely. They don't have to waste any ultimates for this. Just simple, simple right clicks, but that's the hero they want to kill, most importantly. Now, Death Prophet is still going to be a bit of a carry for the raiding team, as is Doombringer, but picking off Lifesteal here and making him into more of a utility. Semi carry is is going to be really good for EG. They don't want to have to deal with three different heroes getting a lot of farms. So this is good for them. I have an interesting question. All right, give it um, to me. As actually, and might fast, have a dive fast, bottom. Fast. We're going to have to wait, punch, I swear. Right, oh, the there's the first one. Will we see an arrow? Nope, nope. Gush, two TPs actually. Oh, that's boy. Uh, 270 gold. You and newbies running to chase. King is very fast. That is a haste room, meaning he's max speed. So this actually forces. Was that three TPs? Three teleports? Oh, wow. Uh, was it three? It was at least two, but now there's four in the lane, so I'm just questioning whether it was three. Well, Either it was way, at least two. That's a lot of people that's investing their time to come down here, and they get nothing out of it, really. So I think they need to transition this into a push. Yeah. Watch for Death Prophet to use her exorcism to take this tower down. And, and according, uh, EG is going to shift over. RTZ has now shifted the safe lane to farm because it's a bit safer here, especially because he doesn't have a huge amount of items just yet. Oh, so Life Stealer again. Bottom jump, bottom rip, and the bottom jump, the bottom center. center. Oh. Okay. That's not too bad. Okay. Zai might actually go down here. He needs two mana to go in Viz. Here it comes! Ooh, oh, that was so close. Oh, that was so close. PPD's going to be Radiance able to leap. The Fissure's going to land on him. Attack. Man, that was close. And this forces bottom lane to not... Oh, actually, never mind. They did Ooh, get it now. Oh, trouble. Oh. Arrow's going to land. Ravage catches all three. Not good for Doom. Not good for Earthshaker. Maybe Dyer's a couple more right clicks. Time. He puts Earthshaker up there. They can try to clean up on him later. Looking for the Boulder Fast. Smash, but they don't have vision. So good escape there from Doom. They do still pick up the Life Steal, which is a great kill. And in the meantime, Arteezy got killed. What the heck is happening really? over here? Really? Looks like Moo cleaned him up. What? A mistake from him. He ended up using the song as well, but I bet he blocked himself in or something. And the and the, the ulti probably finished him off there. So it was looking good for EG, but with that kill, it evens things up a lot more. Yeah. And looking at Death Prophet's items, I know this is Cinder and saying hello to everybody. Just trying to be famous. Typical Cinder. Um, what an attention whore, right? Death Prophet, the way you build her is really interesting. You buy survivability items. It doesn't necessarily mean tank ability. Um, that one is, but she just picked up a point booster, so we can talk about that once she actually finishes the full item there. But I want to talk about Yule Scepter Divinity. This is a cyclone. You've seen a little bit of that with the Brewmaster uh, Earth, or not Earth, the Storm Spirit, the uh -huh. the blue one, if you will. I have seen that. Yes, thank you. Uh, but this one you use on yourself or an enemy only, and it puts you in the air for 2.5 seconds, and you're invulnerable during that time. And the reason that's important for her is because when she pops her ultimate, that's two and a half seconds where her ultimate's doing damage, and she is not. So it's big time survivability. In addition, she gets Dyer's a lot of move speed, which is great for her phase witch, which is great for her witchcraft. I mean, this is like a typical death prophet build. Yet it's not an item you see very often on any other hero. Arrow comes in, lands on the Death Prophet. This could be bad. Taking some damage, but they're not quite they're ready to up. fight this. Perch, look at Tidehunter. He is so close Dyer's to a Blink Dagger. I think they just wait. Fallen. I don't know if they want to fight Radiant's now. Relatively close, yeah. He doesn't have attack. Ravage. That's the main thing. Oh, they great. can't fight this. They don't have Song. They used Song when RTZ died, which was a mistake. RTZ's now died twice. One of those, of course, was to Rashawn. The other one was uh, the gank on the top laner. Whatever the heck happened, I missed it. 
though. Newbie's going to be pushing mid now. Level 2 Exorcism being used. They're trying to pull the Creep Wave past, but EG doesn't have their ultis just yet. Primal Split's not ready. Ravid isn't ready. They've got Epicenter, but that's it. And this is one of the problems with, with all this split up. Jules is used on himself. He's gonna dodge the arrow here. There's the Burrow Strike coming through his eye, trying to slow things down. Ow, maybe trouble. Dyer's There's the clap nuke. Fissure comes fallen. as well. It looks like PPD, the Mirana, is the one that gets doomed, and he is gonna die very, very simply. Well, at the end of the day, EG, they know they can't defend this yet, but they lose a Mirana support for a Doom ultimate. That's not the worst thing in the uh, world. I don't know, man. They get no gold advantage of this. Ooh, a capital TP actually. RTZ can stay and push this tower. Maybe he can finish this off. Do they have any more TPs? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, no more TPs, so RTZ might be able to get this tower. It's a little hurry. dangerous. He's got to take it. He's got to TP out now. His illusions. All right, the tower will end up falling. The catapult to get the last hit. Yeah. But that's good. Radiant's that's good for EG. So trading falling. a tower for a support is okay. They did still lose the tier 2, yeah. so it's not advantageous. Because tier 2 not only right gives now, more yeah, gold, right but it gives better get, position. You're trying to do the best you can in the, not the greatest situation. Because you're waiting for this Naga Siren to pick up that big time item, as well as the Tidehunter who just did. What item is he going oh, for? Oh, he's going for a Radiance, which gives you a ton of raw damage, and it gives you a little aura around you that deals burning damage to everything in your wake. And the pr reason that's amazing is because it, it, it works on her illusion, which we're going to have to talk about once she picks it up, like the... I guess we could talk about it now. I thought they were going to fight, but when you move your illusions around, they, they have the Radiance, Radiance burn. Middle I mean, you can put them in separate attack. lanes in the jungle. You can farm from across the map, which means she's going to catapult and farm. And the fact that she is about 1,200 away from picking up one of the raw items for it, yeah, I'd say 21 minutes purge or so, Double picking down. that up if she doesn't get killed. Maybe a little less. I'm not sure, actually. Uh, we'll see. Either way, it's not the it's not terrible timing, so it's good right, news for you. They're going to pot a multi here. They're looking for kills. They did actually run through an observer ward just now. These are radiant observer wards. They spot things out. That means they would have will have noticed oh that they're boy. looking for the initiation. Oh, they're going to see how. Zai is up here. PPD's up here. The Sand King and the Mirana. This is a great ganking combo, by yeah, the way. These I'm two guys they together. Didn't go for it, to be honest. Well, they knew that everybody on the radiant team was missing, yeah. which meant that even if they try to kill somebody right here, the whole team is probably sitting around the tier one tower. Of course, this they area, can't see so. what we're seeing. They yeah. definitely could have gotten but, that kill, but, but you never for know. For sure, that's what they were thinking, because yeah. the creep wave top was very pushed in. The creep wave bottom, there was nobody farming it, and there was one hero here. Obviously, EG is looking to take a fight, and if there's a hero there, there's no way that's safe. So no blink daggers yet for newbie, but doesn't matter, because life is infested inside of Doom. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Here comes up. the song. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. This is the defensive song we were talking about that people love to hate. <laughs> it's the best way to put it. She uses it. This is a very long cooldown, by the way. Level 1, 180 seconds, so 3 Radiance minutes bottom tower where she will not attack. have that. And that means that Newbie can actually just push this top lane if they choose that this is the correct decision. Here. So if they can take this tier 1 tower, or at least trade with their opponents, Radiance it's a good trade. Um, if Moo saves attack. his ulti, and then they take out a tier 2 tower as well, then this is bad for EG. So hopefully for them, they can take this bot tower, they can push mid as well, perhaps. It's pretty low. Or take the tier, trade the tier 1s and defend the tier 2. But I don't know if they can do that, because RTZ still doesn't have his ulti. He's been using it entirely to defend himself, and they haven't been able to set up with it yet. Generally speaking, you don't want to give up all these towers for nothing, but... Really, EG is trading that these towers for time. I think that's the best way to put it, because once Naga starts to get these items, she becomes very hard to control. Yeah. And newbie, they're just going to continue on. I mean, there's no reason not to. And Still old. got their ulties. Here comes Exorcism. He almost casted it. Attack. He's going to save it for a moment longer. Dyer's top uh, there it comes. Under okay. Attack. So the spirits come out. They're going to hit the tower. The tower is going to take a lot of damage. EG is going to trade a tier one for this. They still don't want to fight. Uh, they just don't want to fight until they have radiance, pretty much, because yeah, so. their damage output is actually really weak. Like Naga Siren is a carry. It's really weak until the radiance comes out because her illusions do damage based on the primary attribute, and radiance doesn't increase that. So her illusions are. I mean, the hero is basically limited to riptide damage, and it's not that much. Yeah. So you have to wait until you get a radiance, then the illusions can run around. They Dyer's do AoE magic burn. And that means if they're just standing there, they do a ton of damage over time. Actually, go ahead and click on the radiance, because we can talk about how do you make items. Like, best way to talk about it. Sure. So the radiance is built out of two items. One of them is a raw component called a sacred relic, which, as you can see, she has in her inventory. This gives just 60 damage. And and nothing else cost a lot of gold now you, you combine that with a recipe which is a piece of paper and that creates the radiance which she's getting very close to now only about 500 or so away so that is good 350 for actually pretty close yeah very close
And oh, actually, somebody has a blink. Who was that? Was that? Okay, Doom now has a blink dagger for newbie. Okay. So expect the infest bombs. If we say nakes bombs or infest bombs, that's what that is. He infests inside of Doom, pops out, says hello to everybody, and beats down their opponent. And this is going to be really good offensively against the Naga Siren because if Naga is trying to set up a fight and newbie can initiate, if they can Doom her, it prevents her from casting her ultimate. And if that happens, Probably a dead hero, especially if Nyx is on the inside. He actually doesn't have Infest right now. And he's also going for a Sanjin Yasha build, which is a little bit low on damage, but more in utility. Which is fine, because they have a lot of carries, the but courier is coming a bit right of a weird build. Radiance. Is this the raid? Radiance? So even if she okay. dies, it's honestly not the worst in the world. I mean, I know that sounds weird, and here we go. Right, here Here's come. the blank. Oh, the Whoa. strong misses. Arteezy doesn't have his ult, though. There's right. the Doom. He's going to attempt to run away, but look at the damage output. Not only from Doom itself, but from the Scorched Earth. This is an easy kill for Newbie, but again, Arteezy just spent all his gold, so he doesn't really lose that much in the end, other than time. Because now he's out yeah. of the out of the game for 40 seconds, meaning that's 40 seconds that he's not farming with those illusions in that new Oh man, radius. that was a close fissure. What a TP out. And actually, even looking at Urshik, everybody's getting their items. It's such a passive game. It's very unusual. Uh, not unusual, but considering the games we've been watching, this is kind of unusual. But Urshaker. About 50 gold from picking up his blink dagger. In, in fact, he uses the fissure just to get the last hit. He has it now. Oh, an arrow mid lane purge. Lich gets destroyed. Oh, wow. Silence to follow from Death Prophet. Not sure if she can do much. She has the cyclone, remember, in that Yule Scepter, but Mirana's just going to leap away. Yeah, it's not worth chasing at this point. Mu's ability to get kills is entirely dependent on whether or not he uses his ulti. And if he uses his ulti, if he uses his ulti to chase people like that, there's a good chance that he'll just waste it. So he has to be careful about that. And now Death Prophet has the Bloodstone item, which she's been building for quite a while. It actually takes quite a bit to build that. Um, okay, so I'm going to take part of part of the Bloodstone. Oh, you take okay. the, there's so many things. Like, it's so insane. So for every, first of all, it starts with eight charges. For every kill that you are near, it gains one charge. And if you die, you lose one third. And each charge will just give you more mana regeneration. The item is basically built for mana regeneration, if nothing else. It has a lot of side things I don't know if we want to get into. Like if you die based on how many charges you have, actually the cooldown on your death is a lot less. It's pretty important, I think. And then if you die, you actually heal your team based on the charges. There's a lot of yeah. little things about Bloodstone that make it very powerful, especially on a death profit. They try to get a kill on uh, the Doom on the bot lane, but it looks like Sanking's gonna die for it. He ends up buying out right before this. So he does give Death Prophet a dominating streak, which is good for him, but at least Sanking doesn't lose anything. Wow, and oh, Naga, Naga gets killed. Siren takes oh. that. So ever since she's picked up a Ravens, she's been 0-2. <laughs> you don't see that very often. Yeah, you really don't. So another kill there on the top lane. EG's in some trouble. That's two failed ganks. At least one, one failed gank and one dead hero on the other side of the map. So if we look at the graph, I bet they're, they're actually not that far behind. 2,000 gold, but it's not looking good. It's going up. And the EXP gain has actually been lost the last couple minutes, too, because these deaths. And another item I want to talk about, because Mason on this Brewmaster is about to pick it up, unless he wants to save Wow, it already? Max. Holy yeah, he's crap. He's going to have an Aghanim Scepter. And what an Aghanim does, for a lot of heroes, it increases the efficiency of your ultimate in some way. As an example, um, actually, there's not that many heroes that get, I guess, Doom. Doom has it, Earthshaker has one, Brewmaster, Sand King. So Brewmaster, when you pick it up, it makes... So, okay, this is the best way to explain it. When you ulti, you lose your Thunderclap, your Drunken Haze, and your Drunken Brawler, right? Because these spirits don't actually get them. They get brand new abilities. But with Aghanim Scepter, you get all of those skills while you're in Brewmaster, or in the spirit form. So you that get sounds so twice good. As, it's, okay, it takes a lot more work to do, Purge. You have to be skilled. You can't just be a terrible player like me and try to micro this stuff. But if you're actually good with it, you will... Increase your damage output by quite a bit. So this is why Radiance is good. If you look at the little effect on the Centaurs, it's a little bit of a burning effect. And you spread one to every single camp, and it allows you to kill them pretty fast. Unless you get really unlucky and you only find Mud Golems. Those Everybody are, those are actually golems. Those are magic immune, so um, the Radiance burn doesn't affect them. Well, unfortunately... Oh, look at this. Life Sealers inside Doom, waiting to pop out and say hello yet again. They haven't actually... I think they've Dyer's shown this Blink Dagger. It's been a while. Fortified. The Exorcism's yeah. used. And Dyer's this tier 2 tower, despite being fortified, that golden attack. ring around the tower means that they cannot kill it for five seconds, but that's a sorry, five minute cooldown, if I'm not mistaken, Purge. Oh, the arrow. Not gonna hit. So it's good. Oh, here we have Purge right in the getting really low, but you see she cyclones herself there. And 
Aerial Slam was used as well. Now Ty Hunter on the run after using his big time Ravage. Didn't really get anything out of it. Another Cyclone. This time, this is the Brewmaster Spear that we talked about. The Fire Pan is taken out. There's the big epic oh, center. Oh. Life Sailor is dead. Lich is dead. It's a five versus three. But do they have enough to continue this fight? Brewmaster uses Thunder Clap again. He's back in normal form, trying to kill Death Frost. But she is so tanky oh. and so difficult. A nice Burrow Strike on Earthshake, who's going to attempt to run away. And if they can just get one Thunder Cup, this should be enough to take them out. And there eventually will be. He uses Echo Slam for that interesting. Not sure about that. Just, <laughs> interesting use. I was like, you're horrible. It does I'm trying to be nice. Well, these are like ridiculously he, pro players. He, he so tried hard. to land the, the Echo Slam so he had time to buy himself a blink. And it didn't quite work out. He needed that instant Explain stun. Explain what that means exactly. Well, if you take player-based damage, you can't use a blink dagger for three seconds. So what he was trying to do was stop Mason from hitting him for up to three seconds that he could blink away. But Mason did a really nice job there chasing and preventing and making sure that he couldn't blink away. So that's why they got that kill. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting play from Mercy. Yeah. Very nice. Sand King did a really nice job in that fight, though, staying alive. He start, He came in at the very beginning. He got really low. He escaped again. He channeled Epicenter. He blinked back in and Burrow striked and killed the Life Stealer. And then he came back a third time and tried to double Burrow strike. He only ended up catching one, which led to the Earthshaker kill. But if he would have got both, that would have been really sick. And looking at Death Prophet, she didn't die. It is, I mean, is it even worth trying to kill her? I mean, oh. it's so ridiculous. I and mean, we saw in the game, uh, EG versus DK, even though they lost, <laughs> this, you saw where she tried to kill herself in the fountain. <laughs> she was too tanky. She tried to get back to the other base, but uh, just couldn't do it. Remember. I mean, it actually ended up biting her I'll, in the I'll take your word result. for it. Yeah, it was, well, what do you mean take my word? Does that even mean she pops her ultimate? Damage is gonna be done. Oh, Stan King actually misses the Burrow Strike. Mainly because of the rage, I think, from Lifestealer. And this tower, in all likelihood, is dead. There's the song. Sick. They're going to try to set this up. Let's see if they can do it correctly. Arrow incoming. It's going to hit Doom. Can they kill him before he gets the Doom on? He's still stunned. One more couple of clicks. There's the epicenter finishing him off. Death Prophet still alive. Look at her ultimate go. Doombringer actually buys back in the game. EG needs to be taking note of this. Tidehunter is going to continue to chase. Remember, Echo Slam was used by Earthshaker, so he has pretty much nothing other than this Fissure. And nicely done, though. But there, Lich gets taken out. Though so a terrible fight for Newbie, and that Ooh. was actually three dead because Doom bought back. Dude, they haven't even used Ravage yet. Are you kidding? They could still fight. This puts them in a good attack. spot. They used all of their other ultimates, but they still have Ravage. So if Newbie wants to force this, like they might want to do. Arteezy gets spotted, actually. He gets doomed by the Doom. Zhao 8 here. Radiant's Universe going to five gosh. On the mechanism on Will, Tidehunter. All right. He's definitely going to be able to mech him, I believe. Oh. It's just a little scary. Here comes the mech. Arteezy is going to be alive. He's pretty low. Oh, how is it here? Radiant's oh, bit of a mistake there. Attack. They're oh still man. able to clean him up there because he runs into the Aegis or into the Roshan pit. He could have denied himself if he wasn't mad. He could have. But you never, I mean, obviously, well, you didn't see that coming. I, don't, I didn't see how coming in either, personally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really hard to keep track of in the of meantime, stuff, so. while all this is happening, top Radiant's tower already tower half health for fallen. the tier two. Radiant's top TPD tower on this Mirana doing attack. a little bit of damage. You're not going to be able to take it out. And remember, uh, when towers and buildings get below 10% health, that is when you can deny it. And denying it means killing your own tower or... Uh, barracks or whatever other building and this basically denies a lot of gold for the enemy team They still get a little bit, but not nearly as much as they would have and right now it is at 348 health So it's just gonna have to stand there So the next push for EG in all likelihood will be for that tier 2 tower So the, the suicide and death profit was actually a really good way for newbie to not lose as much in that fight She did use it because she knew she was gonna die and it's a six minute cooldown You can't do this every fight, but it's a really nice thing to use if you know that you're going to go down. You don't lose your killing spree if you suicide, by the way, so not only does she not lose gold, well, she loses gold for dying. Suiciding does lose you gold, but you don't lose a ton of gold because of your, your spree loss, so mm -hmm. if she can just not have to die for the next three minutes, she'll be in a good spot. That is a, another thing about the Bloodstone. I mean, there's a million things in one that we could talk about that freaking item. Of course, it's not picked it's up good. too often. I mean, it's like heroes. fairly common. Come on. Really? Fairly? I mean, um, Death Prophet's barely picked Death Tinker Prophet buys it sometimes. Tinker buys it sometimes. Once in a while, you see a, a Storm Spirit buy it. Yeah. It's not that unusual. Ooh, I want to talk about Veil of Discord on Sand okay. King. That is, this is what, I, I, would you consider this a luxury item? I mean, this yes. is awesome on him. Blink this Dagger is, is core. I uh, mean, oh, he didn't even notice he has Force Staff. Holy yeah, he bought that. Remember that time he died bottom by the Tier 2 tower? No. Uh, okay, do you remember that time that RTZ got 
gank. I don't here. remember anything. Do you remember this? Where he died up here? Yeah. That was the same time. So I was bottom. He ended up dying. Okay. But he bought it right before he died. Oh, he might be in some. Oh, again. Oh, he gets silenced. Uh, that is the death of him. Again, the ganking on Arteezy. Well, he's just yeah, getting Ubi's hounded. Doing so well in terms of controlling Arteezy. And a lot of times, this is <laughs> it's a funny thing. It's kind of a joke with EG. Teams come in trying to control Arteezy, and somebody else ends up taking over the game. So the question is. Can Arteezy either come back or is somebody else going to take over in his stead? Of course, they have uh, so much team fight. It's going to be very difficult, even with all these kills, Newbie to yeah. push into the enemy base. And the net worth is way higher on Newbie as well. It's way higher. Uh, the Death Prophet's 4,000 gold ahead. That's a full item ahead. Even the Life Stealer is sitting about the same farm. No, he's actually even ahead of Arteezy. So they have two, car two carries that can farm pretty darn well that are both ahead of Arteezy. So Dyer's that's going to be really hard for him to... Attack. Make a big contribution. Arrow's gonna land actually on Life Stealer. Do they have vision of this? They do actually. There's Ravage coming in. Stomp as well. They're spreading out. BKB's popped by a lot of the newbie heroes. And the Pep is gonna come through as well. Moog gets really low. Chain Frost bouncing around. Big dunk coming from the Earthshaker. Universe is getting low as well. He might end up falling. But buyback from Panda now. He gets cleaned up. His pandas go away. Mason comes in. He gets doomed the second time. There's the open wounds. How's gonna end up dying? I think he does end up going down. Bit of a mistake. Arteezy's gonna fall as well. Well, big mistake there, and they still end up getting the racks. Newbie pushes in, takes the racks off of EG. Is there any team Dyer's Newbie can't beat? <laughs> Seriously, I don't understand what I'm seeing here. Somehow I'm still surprised. I don't know why. I mean, they're just dominating everybody, and that fight is no exception. We saw the life steal. Oh, he actually did die because he infested inside Doom. I thought he was just going to stay in there for the he, rest of the fight. He popped out. He really wanted to kill the Brewmaster when the Brewmaster got doomed. Yeah. And he chased for too long. And if you if you overly chase like that, their teammates are going to notice what's happening and they're going to try to defend them and possibly clean you up. And that's exactly what happened. He got cleaned up big time there. And you guys might have noticed that life steal actually got low at the very beginning of the fight. And he survived for quite a while because of his feast, meaning his passive skill where he gains uh, HP. So when, uh, like you were talking about earlier, actually, Brewmaster splits into three, he just starts right-clicking all three, gains a ton of health, and he's back in the fight again. So that was pretty damn good for Newbie. But uh, EG's not quite out of it. I mean, this is actually, this is the weirdest thing about it, Purge. What Naga, is the weirdest Arteezy thing? Arteezy picked up the Radiant. He's one and eight. It, he used to be zero, seven, and two. One, eight, and two looks a little better, I think, right? Apparently. Right? He actually got the kill there. Apparently, uh, Radiance Burn or something, I, I'm not entirely sure. The reason he's dying so much, though, is because he's so far behind. Um, if you do a nice job, or at least you, if you don't, he's been playing well, I'm sure. But if you get ganked this much and, and focus this much, like Newbie is focusing him, mm -hmm. it hurts his Radiance timing, and then his Radiance is delayed, then it impacts his overall farm really hard. And he's not able to snowball off at kills at all. He has no chance of getting kills now because his items are so far behind. Death Prophet is not even vaguely close to being able to be touched by the Naga Siren. And she has a really good way to clear illusions as well. Crypt Swarm can nuke the illusions. If her ulti is up, it can clear the illusions. Newbie is just in a really good spot. Hide Hunter in the enemy jungle gets doomed. I'm not sure what he's doing down there. I just farming. I mean, EG does this a lot, actually. They they kind of split the map like this, and they end up farming three camps here, as well as the bot lane. They farm one person mid, and then they farm most of their jungle as well. And if you cut the map like this, it means that your team is going to get more farm than theirs, and eventually, uh, you call it starving, eventually you're going to starve them out. You'll have way more gold than they will, and you'll be able to take a fight. Here we see Roshan, the ancient creep, basically in the middle of the map, always available to be taken. Well, not always. When you kill him, it's dead for you between 8 to 11 minutes. But the important thing is, once Roshan they get this kill, the item the called radiant. the Aegis of the Immortal will drop to the deck, and Life Stealer picks it up. This gives him a free life for the next six minutes to use, and that is pretty scary for EG. I'm not sure what they can do here, but... Um, Okay, we talked about this. Arteezy still only has one level in the snare. He needs, really right, he game, needs all the HP he can get right now. True. He can't even fight against Life Stealer because his a, he only has 1,200 HP. The, the main goal that you get at first, after you get the Radiance, is increasing your movement speed, which is exactly what Arteezy is doing. He purchased first the Radiance, then he bought Boots of Travel because that increases your Illusion's movement speed by 50. Then he buys a Yasha, and now he's running at 462, which is really fast. And when your Illusions get this fast, they become very, very difficult to kill. He'll probably build towards a heart now or finish his Manta as well, but he needs movement speed on these things. They can spread out, they can farm, they'll do AoE slow damage to all of these creeps. They are one racks down, but if there's any kind of hero that can make this go on really long until <laughs> our EG's ahead, it's, it's Naga Siren. Yep, indeed. Sad but true, good sir. Now, of course, with Roshan down for the next 8 to 11 minutes, this gives Newbie a little bit of time 
I'm sorry, EG a little bit of time because this is forcing Newbie in a lot of ways to push. Because you don't want the enemy to farm, you don't want EG to farm anymore, you don't want uh, to wait for the next Roshan because you want to take advantage of this agent. That's a free life, why not? But at the same time, I don't know, do you feel like they need to force this? Because EG has such better late game overall. Does EG need to force this? No, does Newbie need to force this with oh, that Aegis? Um, I mean, their team oh, fight's very good. I kind of would like them to just take an Aegis and go for a Rex, personally, because... You mean use I, the Aegis? Yeah, use use the Aegis and, and use it. Basically, try to force a fight, because yeah. they have the right heroes for it, I think. I mean, IEG has better team fight, but theirs is not the worst. And, and most importantly, they need to get two racks. I'm just a little scared of a Naga, because Naga has made so many games difficult for a lot of teams in the past, so... I'm just a little worried about the Naga Siren. If they get two racks, I'd feel really comfortable with Newbie, and then Newbie can do whatever the hell they want, play really, really safe. But for now, if they have the Aegis, they might as well go for it. Yeah, and of course, when they have the Barracks, that means the creeps in their lane are going to be much tougher to kill and give less gold and experience. And the mid lane is just going to continue to push for Newbie, and they're going to group up here at bottom lane. They're going to do exactly what we feel Dyer's is necessary. Exorcism is popped. Lifestealer has extra armor thanks to Lich. You've noticed that little shield above his head. Yep. Any hero that actually attacks him, or any unit actually, gets slowed as well. Good going in. Oh boy, arrow coming in. It's gonna hit. Oh, it hits. Oh, Death Prophet's getting really low. Look at her ultimate though. It's dealing so much damage. Do they even have enough to kill her? Artizia on Naga Siren. Echo slam the follow. She used a cycle on herself. She's still alive. I don't believe it. And unfortunately, the Shaking Ultimate doesn't do pretty much anything. Just a little bit of damage. And there she gets healed up from her exorcism. Oh, we talked about that earlier in the game. The fissure is there, blocking little people off, but in the end, Lifesealer comes back from that Aegis of the Immortal. And right now, it's a one for one with one buyback from Arteezy, I believe. Burrow Strike might be enough to finish off the Earthshaker, and it is. Is Nubi actually going to back up now? Because Exorcism downs for another 65 seconds. That was a really good hold from EG. Is that only one buyback, or am I wrong? Uh, let's take a look. That uh, was. Yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, only but it was, one. But it was Naga. It was Naga, but she's already got a lot of gold, and she did get a kill out of it. When you buy back, it costs you a bunch of gold. You respawn immediately, and the next time you die, you're dead for extra long. So because RTZ bought back there, he's going to be dead a lot the next time he dies. But he did get one kill out of it. It also prevents you from farming, by the way. You can only get last hits when the buyback gold penalty goes away. And now it has, so he's going to be just fine. But buying back is a little bad but look what his gold he's already up to 2000 which means he's going to finish his next item really soon he's still about an item what's his overall net worth it's he's still behind everybody else but his he's, gpm he's tied is with like lifestealer oh that's right? that's good he's yeah. so he's increasing here so he's about the same as lifestealer his farm is maybe equivalent because lifestealer has a midas and naga doesn't so it's not the worst place to be in as easy just the important part is you don't want to lose the next racks if they lose the second racks the game is going to be really difficult yeah. to win i would say i mean i still think newbies in the driving driver's seat for sure still but naga siren is something you have to think about going into the late game looking at death prophet herself right now she has the heart of she's had a the heart of harass this gives you a ton of extra health and when out of combat for a few seconds you will heal at a ridiculous rate and this is what we're talking that's why she was so hard to kill in that fight i mean if they had life stealer meaning eg that is a great hero against death prophet they don't really have any great physical dps at least not yet and she's starting to get out of control. I mean, they put everything on her. She lived. And like you said in the earlier game, exorcism, when you use it, any damage that's done, a percentage of that damage when, it's, when the ultimate is complete will come back and heal you. And that's why she came back with essentially full health. So difficult to kill. And now Lifestealer has an Assault Curious. Holy crap. They're getting so many. They're getting big. Yeah, so what an Assault Curious does is it increases your attack speed. It also gives you a lot of armor. And it also gives you a really cool aura. The aura gives your allies attack speed gives your allies armor, and it also reduces your opponent's armor by including five. Including so, buildings. Including buildings and towers and stuff like that. So it's a really nice attack speed item. It'll help him take out tanky heroes, but it'll also give his team a lot of armor. And they actually have two aura items right now. I saw somebody else, the one that's the Earthshaker. He picked up the Vlads. This is another item that gives you five armor, and these stack now. So their entire team has 10 bonus armor, and to get 10 bonus armor normally, it costs... 1400 gold of a plate mail so because of these two oh auras they're to the whole team has a plate mail they have 1400 worth of armor just armor vlads gives other stuff ac gives other stuff but the armor alone means they're very survival against eg only downside eg is almost entirely magic based so <laughs> true um not in the fact, most it, important eg point, is but. really the one that needs armor because remember exorcism from death prophet Radiance, the middle middle looking at death prophet and doom right now purge they both have shivas that's extra auras on top of everything this is an yeah. activatable item that when used, it'll uh, you get a huge area. Oh, I might have to hold on that. 
might have a fight. So when you click it, you get a big, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Frost area, circle. Frost stuff. Is under attack. Violent mystical I, field. I, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Skyrim made, unfortunately. Uh, but it gives you it gives you a lot of armor, and it slows the attack speed of your enemies as well in the area. So that's going to be coming into effect. It does not stack, so the two items, the aura will not stack. So that would be pretty ridiculous. Um, the exorcism team is doing work. Nice Burrow Strike. Burrow. Be sure to follow. Dyer's They're going to get the easy tower, tower though. Fallen. Remember, the mid lane continues to push. It looks like Newbie is going to focus on the range attack. rack first. There's the Naga Ooh, Siren ult. He's got to catch up, though. Nothing. There's one. There's one. There's one. Okay. Will he grab any? But wow, a bit oh, of a whiff. They actually my. didn't use that right. Um, I thought they were going to initiate on that, but they didn't. Well, at the same time, Newbie actually falls back. So, I mean, okay. the exorcism is um, now over, which means you probably don't want to have a team fight because that's the main damage source. Yeah. Um, the the Naga really Lucians odd. are going to die. <laughs> I, I guess they're happy with the power. That was really weird. I, I thought he was going to be able to catch people with that. He is level 16, though, so the cooldown is very low. Now it's down to 60 seconds. We'll see him casting that a lot more. He's got his Manta style oh, as boy. well. Watch for Earthshaker on the right here. Maybe. Maybe. Um, nope. Well, EG smoked. So Earthshaker actually does not see them passing by. No, other than the Naga Siren, who now shows herself. Reverse. There's the Boros Strike from Titan, or from Saiyan King, I should say, Doom. Can he get off his Doom? Does he even want to? He just gets decimated. Earthshaker still sitting in the trees, <laughs> just creeping it up. Killing. No big deal. I've seen a lot of more players do this more and more, and I find it very weird because it's... It seems like they're wasting time, but really what they're doing is looking for opportunities. I, I feel like he's wasting his time now because this... Oh, I'm sorry, this is, this is not his team, but... Um, he's looking for opportunities where he can come from the back and try to make plays happen. So, once in a while doing that, I think is fine. Tricks people. You I never was know. wondering if he was going for an orchid or a a refresher, and it is a refresher for the master. So he can use his ultimate twice. Of course, you can't use them at the same time, but you use one. Dude, that would back, be so cool if you could. That would get like six pants. <laughs> That's impossible. Like you have to have two people play for you at that point. I mean, come on. Yeah. Actually, you can give your teammates control now that I think about it. So No, it, it won't work, I don't think. It'd be really good, though, <laughs> if you could. If yeah. you could summon two, yeah. your DPS would double. You could stun stack. You could stun somebody for four seconds with two boulders. You could clap, wait four seconds, clap again. Oh, that would be good. But what he can do instead is he can he can ulti, he can clap, or he can clap ulti. He can use his pandas for a really long 19 seconds. He can clap again. Then he can refresh and ulti again. It's... It's so much damage. It's all magic based. That's not true. It's it's largely magic based. The the pandas do hit pretty hard, but it's it's a cool idea. The only downside is if he gets doomed, he's dead. But that, that was kind of the case anyways. Yeah, if he gets much. silenced, it's not going to work. There's a couple counters on the radiant team that he's going to have to deal with. Well, at this point, so expect Brewmaster. And again, who knows if they're actually going to do this? The problem with Brewmaster in a lot of cases is obviously getting silenced. So if you blink and then you thunderclap. Generally, that's what you want to do is blink, thunderclap, and then use your ulti. Yep. I don't think he has time. I think he needs to blink and ulti, like you said. So it uh, should be interesting. I mean, by the time his ulti is up, like he comes back in the normal form, he can refresh. Doom is probably, he's already used his ultimate at that point. So you're, you're free to reign yeah. however you'd like. You see how far his eye is here on the Sand King. He's yeah, got an Ogre Club right now. He's almost got Aghanim Scepter, and that'll increase his ulti. You sure he's not It'll going to BKB? Uh, yeah, you're probably right. It's probably a BKB. It's, not the greatest, it's a lot safer. Of course, um, BKB is called Black King Bards an item. When you activate, you become magic immune, turns to golden. Oh boy. Items would give him a lot more damage. We have a guy TPing out. Uh, it's actually Universe. Oh, this is bad. Universe is farming. They don't. He doesn't real. Oh, there's the four staff. He's on the dire team. Ooh. Oh boy. He gets caught. He's, he's gonna have to fight now, or he's gotta Blake home. There's the gush. He's looking to Blake two seconds. Look, look, look. Doesn't get it off. Silence as well. He's gonna go down almost for sure. Yep, he does end up falling. Notice how he just, he slowed and then he's not slowed all of a sudden. That is his crack and shell. Yeah. Procking it over like, and over. Sounds again. like a splash of water, basically. And Roshan will now be taken out for a second time. So, of course, uh, it's only the second time, meaning the Aegis will be the only Radiant's item to drop. I guess Lifesteal probably takes this again. Death Prophet, for you guys out there, is not a good hero to pick up uh, yeah. the Aegis because when you ult and you die Radiant's and come back, your ult is attack. done. Dude, look at this tower taking a lot of damage here. Oh, wow. Roshan By the Illusion. Lifesteal does range. grab it. He buys a Mjolnir as well. Mjolnir got, is really good against Naga. Yeah. He's got... 
two major attack speed items. These both give 55 attack speed, I believe. Um, I'm sorry, Mjolnir gets 80 right now. It's huge attack. attack speed, and it does lightning occasionally. And this is good because it's a very good way for Lifestealer life to clear the Radiant's Naga illusion. And that's what they have to deal with. Um, if, and it does also increase your AoE farming capabilities. You can use an active buff on you as well, and if you take damage, it will occasionally throw out a, a lightning bolt. And that's very good against Radiance again, because Radiance will hit you every second, which means every five seconds on average, you'll get a static charge blast coming out, just because of that. It's actually, the yeah, static chance is 20%, so very, very simple to knock these out. So Sand King did end up going for the BKB, which means he'll be magic immune when he activates that. This is important, kind of, okay, I want to talk about a little bit. So when you channel your ultimate, the epicenter, you need about two seconds of nobody stunning you or silencing you at that time. BKB will avoid silences and stun, but the problem is there's actually two heroes on the opposing team that will go through this BKB to stop your ult, which dooms doom and Lich's ultimate. The first bounce on his ultimate will actually cancel. It has a little bit of a mini stun. Mini stun. Yeah. So don't expect him to try to like depend on that for his ultimate. I think it's just to survive in fights more than anything. I mean, it's he does have to be in the right place to do this, and I don't think Sand King's going to put himself in the opportunity. To be honest, he's been kind of playing pretty consistently. As the push comes up, he does a blink burrow strike to safety, and then a bit after, when things get confusing, he does the epicenter. And it's a smart way to play it because. Everybody that everybody that's at this level that plays against the Sand King knows what Sand King's gonna do when the fight starts. They're like, okay, he's obviously gonna epicenter. So if you do something a little different, like how he's doing it, if he jumps in, throws the burrow strike, and then waits until later to do the epicenter, his opponents don't predict it as much, and it gives him a bit of an edge. So I don't think he'll put himself in that kind of a position. And even if he does, he's gonna make sure you use Black King Bar just to make sure that it goes through. So we have a new item pickup for Naga Siren. Not the most typical thing you see on her. It's called a Lincoln oh, Spear. It's a very makes defensive sense. item. It will block the next uh, projectile, I guess. And for spells, it'll completely cancel them. So if Doom tries to Doom her, yeah. it will completely cancel it out, and the Doom will be wasted. But yeah. there are some skills to get rid of it, such as, actually, not that many. Actually, I'm not Radiant sure if Fissure does it. So uh, it does. Attack. Level Death, Frost Blast, okay. Chain Lightning, um, Yule Scepter, Force Stacks, Cheap Stick. There's a lot of stuff. They're shifting the bot lane. They're going to try to take this. They're actually hitting it already. Rage Rex goes down. I don't know if they're going to. They're going in. There's the Ravage. Great Ravage. Will they clap again? There's the oh, oh, the AoE oh, damage. So oh. much of Sand King hit everything. Banana goes down. The Lich falls. Universe is running for his life. He's going to end up dying, but completely worth it, I think. Gem hits the ground. Two for one. Zai's still chasing. He wants to fight. Burrow Strike lands. Next stun lands. Here comes Mason. He can refresh this if he wants to. He wants, maybe wants to split again. Good Fissure. Arrow's going to land on the Life Stealer, though, and they're chasing now. I don't think he wants to use his ulti. He can jump inside Earthshaker if he wants. And I guess he doesn't have to anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he goes. All right, he does it fine. What an escape. Beautiful escape. All right. And RTZ's pushing top. He has used a lot of his skills here. Oh, and my he God. gets Radiant's the rack. Unbelievable. The power of Naga Siren. But here we go. This is where the game gets crazy. Because Death Prophet, I was wondering if she's going Lincoln's or, uh, uh, sorry, a Refresher. She goes for Ooh. Refresher. Well, so yeah. Unlike like somebody like you guys maybe remember Razor picking up a Refresher Orb. Meaning, of course, when, it, when I say Refresher Orb, you activate it. You get all your abilities back off cooldown. But the thing is, you can't use two ultimates at the same time for her, unlike like something yeah. like Razor. So, oh, that would be so OP. Yeah, that would be OP. Similar to, I guess, Brewmaster is a good point as well. But uh, this means that for all intents and purposes, unless this game continues to go on for like 30 more minutes, she will almost always have her ultimate available. Because a lot of times, you guys have seen, they get kited, meaning uh, get slowed or get turned around on uh, to the point where her ultimate actually is about to dissipate and they just can't continue. Well, that's not really a problem anymore. Yeah, this game's turning insane. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, Newbie has to take another Rax, and they keep doing Rax damage, so I think they're going to be just fine. Oh, there's a song. Oh. They're so grouped right now. If they can land a Burrow Strike, nobody's, oh, close. nobody's even close. Arteezy saw it, though. He saw the opportunity. He said, they're grouped, they're grouped, they're grouped. Come, come. But everybody was split. Mason's bottom, PPD's bottom. I don't even think the Sanking was there. He's got his epicenter ready to go, though. Do you think they go for Throne? Here come the TPs. Oh. They're not going to have the sleep to set this up. 38 seconds left. They're going for Throne. Actually, there's the clap. He goes in. Burrow Strike hits two. Zai runs back in. Arrow's going to land. It lands on the Life Stealer, but it doesn't end up working. Wow, did Brewmaster die fast. He buys back. He's going to pop Refresher to get his ulti up again. His illusions are 
bear things, panda things, and that's so fast. The tier 4 towers are taking damage. They've got to kill him fast. Oh. There's the center. BKB being you. Sen Sheng tries to dunk this. Xiao Wei, the Doom running for his life. Will he be able to live? He's all the RTG goes down. Doom goes down. Ravage finally happens. Universe. Second Ravage. Another anchor smash. Triple Burrow strike. Can they win the fight? Help pops out. He's hitting the panda. The panda's going to die. How goes down? RTG is going to sleep. But it doesn't matter. The fight's over. There's only one hero left. It's the Lich. Earthshaker's in the base defending. Will Lich go down as well? Yes. GG defends a triple kill on Arteezy. What a buyback. What a defense. Their AoE was so sick there, man. They were all grouped up. The double Ravage. And as soon as the double Ravage ends, Zaya also gets a burrow strike. I'm so, I'm so like, impressed with Zaya on Sand King. He goes in and out. You think he's dead. Then he's not. He comes back with a huge ultimate along with the double Ravage. The problem here for EG is if even that, even though that fight went relatively well for them, if that happens again, they, they lose. Yeah. If they lose the fight, because look, the tier fours are down. It seems that Newbie has made the choice that they're not gonna be going for top or bottom racks anymore. They're going straight for the win. And well, this might be a good time to push, even though they're well, not the greatest time to push since Brewmaster's down. But remember, Death Prophet used her refresher two ultimates. Her next one's up in 40 seconds though, so not enough time. This is, yeah. oh. Marana, even <laughs> a support Marana has an assault gear. What? What? Bottom and this is actually, okay, we were talking about the Radiant implications of assault gears in general, and how great it is uh, for pretty much any team, but it's more so for EG. This is a Radiant huge item. If Marana can stay alive Radiant. with that aura, Radiant's middle meaning tower Death Prophet's ultimate attack. does so much less damage for everybody, making it a lot harder to kill the towers. It, in a lot of ways, it cancels out the the assault curious for, for newbie. Yeah, they, they do cancel each other out, but that's good. They're back on even footing. That's yeah. what EG needs. They have to be careful, though, because like you said, every time that newbie goes in their base, they get advantage. They get advantage. If they do that again, the Ancient goes away. So EG's going to have to be more prepared for this. And here it is. Newbie's Radiant's walking mid. EG's a bit attack. bottom. There's a few heroes down here. They do have teleport scrolls ready. They don't have Ravage, though. 34 seconds on Ravage, 40 on the Refresher. Zai's ready to go on the Sand King. His ulties are up. Mason has attack. his 17 on Refresher, so he's going to be set. One thing to know, Purge, only one buyback available, and it's on Death Prophet. Oh, he thought he was getting ganked. Radiant's Weird. Oh! Oh, Lincoln Sphere. We have a fight in the base, though. Brewmaster pops his own. Oh, this might be the game-breaking situation. Brewmaster's dead! The entire, all three spirits are completely dead. I don't think they can defend without him. They're just going to go straight for throat. Is Newbie actually going to do this? Coming from behind yet again. Zai, Chanley, and Bokley just dies right away. Two dead, no buybacks on anybody. This is going to be Newbie's if they just go for the throw now. They're going to continue to damage it. Fortification is popped. There's the Death Prophet with the second ultimate. There's no way to oh. defend this. Ravage Big Ravage. Here. Make it two. Is this enough to take out Death Prophet? She's getting really low. Oh. Pops her Cyclone. They're going to get it, though. Oh, my God. This is insane. Oh, ah, game one, kill me. Ah, Newbie takes game one versus EG. This is a best of three. Who goes to grand finals? Which team is it gonna be? Uh, what a good, like, what a good draft from Newbie. They played this so well. They pressured Arteezy all game. His farm ended up being insane, but it wasn't enough, and he was.